I want us to turn our attention to the Word of God. First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9. I want to preach on the prayer of Jabez, overcoming labels, lids, and limitations. Look at somebody right now, tell them, I don't need your labels. I don't want your lid, and I do not accept your limitations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The prayer of Jabez, verse number nine. Now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bore him in pain. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me and that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. I want you to look at that last line again. So God, somebody say, so God granted to him what he requested. The prayer of Jabez. Father, help us today to rightly divide the word of truth. I pray, Father, in Jesus' name that every insufficiency in me would be hidden and irrelevant as you come into this place and bring the preaching anointing that makes preaching life changing. Today I stand before your people, God, declaring with them and believing with them that today the word of the Lord is going to change their lives. And I thank your Holy Spirit for the anointing that makes preaching mean something. And I pray, God, that before we leave today, having been exposed to this truth and this anointing that you give, we will all leave transformed and changed by the power of God in Jesus. Uh, yes, Lord. And I serve notice on enemies right now, enemies that have haunted and hindered the people of God. And some of them have even come in this place today with audacious courage to sit here with the people that they've attacked and they think they're going to continue the attack but I serve notice on the enemy right now that the power of God is coming upon these saints and they're going to be loose from every yoke of bondage and lie of the devil in the name of Jesus and I praise you for it now God and I thank you for it now. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. The blood is against you. And I pray the power of God would set every captive person free in Jesus' name. And everyone said amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The prayer of Jabez. I love the hidden treasures in the word of God. And this text is one such treasure. It is a text of obscurity tucked away in a list of names and genealogies. It's almost missed in the monotony of ancestry. It's sandwiched right in the middle of a plethora of people and lineage. And then right out of nowhere in the middle of all these names and so-and-so begat so-and-so and stuff that we typically don't read when we're on our Bible reading plan. Right in the middle of all this monotony is this little two-verse truth about a man named Jabez. He is not mentioned or referred to anywhere else in the Bible. He suddenly appears and almost as quickly he disappears. What we know about Jabez, we only know from this text. He appears to be the son of a man named Koz. He is not an only child for the text tells us that he had brothers. In fact, the scripture says that he was more honorable than the rest of his brothers. He was more honorable than the rest of his brothers. He was more honorable. He's known for his honor. There's something about the honor and the state of honor on this man that causes him to stand out and stand up in the midst of a crowd. I found out that being a man or a woman of honor is a quality that attracts the favor of heaven. The word honor, say honor. The word honor in the Hebrew here is the word kabad, K-A-B-A-D. 
A.D., kabad, and it literally means uh, to have a heaviness or a weightiness of, of, of honor on your life. It is a unique word because it is the word that we use to identify people who are honorable, and likewise, it is the Hebrew word used to identify people who are honored. Don't miss this. It's the same word to describe both those who honor and those who are honored. In other words, it's a reciprocating uh, term. You can't be a person who honors without being a person who is honored. There are many people in the kingdom of God who do not understand the principle of honor. And honor is something that you cannot show unless you are willing to properly identify and value someone or something when it walks into the room. Have you ever been privileged to be in the room with someone who is uh, significant or someone who is an official or someone who is well known or someone who is famous? When they walk into the room, a person who is honorable rightly determines the value of that person and you do not sit there when a person of honor walks in, kick back and say, hey, what's up? A person of honor does not sit back and say, hey, what's up? When someone significant walks into the room. When someone significant walks into the room, if you are a person of honor, you stand up, you extend your hand and you say, hello, my name is and it is an, come on, talk to me this morning, church. It is an honor to meet you. How many know what I'm talking about? Why do we say things like that? Because we recognize the value of the person who walked into the room. Oof. This whole thing about honor really doesn't begin with your ability to properly identify and value people. It really begins with your ability to properly value and identify God when he walks into the room. Because if God can walk into the room and you sit there and say, yo, what's up? Then no wonder you don't know how to honor people who are people of honor when they walk into a room. If you won't stand up for God, you won't stand up for anybody. If, if you are so self-centered and life is so much about you and your ego is so big that when somebody else of significance walks into the room, you can't say, it's an honor to meet you. There's no reason we got to beg people to praise God in church. When God walks into this room, should nobody need a reason to, to stand up and clap hands and weep and to praise him and to lift our hands? If you got to have somebody beg you to praise him, it's just because you really don't know him yet. If you really know God, when he walks into the room, you forget about who is sitting next to you and you forget about how your hair got did and how beautiful your nails are and you forget about how nice you look and how well put together you are. When somebody significant walks into the room and you're a person of honor, you stand and say, it's an honor to have you in this room. I came to tell you right now, we got to get this honor thing straight in the church because this honor is killing the body of Christ. If you don't properly value people and if you don't properly value the things of God, you can actually dishonor what God's hand is on and miss the blessing that came when you could have honored that person or that move that God was involved in. That's why I'm careful about how I open my mouth against things that I don't know about. I'm not going to get no help on this. But there are people in this room right now and watching me on live stream, you have no hesitation at all to criticize something that just doesn't look like your favorite thing. And just because it ain't your favorite thing, you condemn it. You know what you are. You're insecure and you're nervous that God is bigger than you and your little dog and pony show. I'm going to walk around. I'm going to preach till I turn over everything in this house today. There are some people in the kingdom of God that get on my nerves bashing and criticizing and dishonoring things that don't look like their favorite thing. Can I tell you that the kingdom of God is big enough for God to bless me and God to bless people who do it a way other than the way I I do it. You got to learn how to be able to celebrate people who do it like you do and you got to be big enough and kingdom minded enough to be able to honor what God does in somebody else. You would blow, would blow your mind at the people who, how many were here during the 90 day revival several years ago, four years ago? We had a 90 day revival. It would blow your mind at the preachers in this city that stood up and condemned us. 
Now, there wasn't a lot of them, but there were, there were people who stood up and said crazy stuff. And all we were doing was preaching Jesus and people getting saved. And they said, oh, they're turning that thing down there. All them kids getting up on the stage dancing. Just hush. I would rather them be standing on this stage dancing and giving God praise and laying in the floor flopping like a fish and drunk under the power of God so much so that they didn't even know where they parked their car. I'd rather for that to be happening than them laid up in a whorehouse or a crack house or some other kind of house. What's wrong with people in the church? I am careful about what I criticize because just because it doesn't look like where I, the way I do it doesn't mean it ain't of God. And if you want to know what real maturity is, now I'm not talking about people who don't preach Jesus or change the doctrine. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about people who just do things a little differently. Why you got to have all them lights? Why don't you want them? Why y'all sing off the screen? Why do you sing out of a book? I don't care if you sing out of a book or off the wall. Just sing. It's a spirit of dishonor. Walking around as God's appointed man and judge of all things. Who do you think you are? Let me just talk to the TV so nobody in here gets it personal, okay? Who do you think you are? You are not the sum total of all things and all knowledge. God is bigger than your feeble brain. I'll never forget one Sunday preaching. I was preaching, hammering away. Sister Betty, who sits on the second row, sweet woman of God, been with us all these years, mid-80s. She's sitting there and I'm preaching about people who cannot see God is bigger than, than their little box. And she said this, Lord bless. She said it so loud. The whole area right here heard her. She said, Lord bless their feeble minds. For you and I to speak against something that is different than what our favorite thing is reveals how insecure we really are. And I'm going to tell you right now, what you dishonor, you repel. Well, I don't believe in miracles. You're not going to see many of them, I promise. (laughs) I don't believe when he stands up and says God's going to bless us financially. Stay broke. Stay broke. I don't care. Just stay broke. How about we just honor the word and we honor the work and we honor. Listen, don't get strangled and, 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 and don't run into a speed bump over methods. And I'm going to take it a step further. Not just speaking against movements, but speaking against men and women. There are people who do it differently than I do it but they love Jesus and they preach the truth. And I'm not standing up in the pulpit to bash or to dishonor other people when the the currency of the kingdom of Jesus is a currency of honor. You do not get trusted with the wealth of heaven and I don't mean money, just money. I mean the favor of God. You do not get the favor of God on your life as long as you run around as deputy sheriff in the kingdom telling the world how off everybody else is but you. You are blind, sit down and be quiet, get the telephone pole out of your eye before you... Well, praise God, it's going to be one of them kind of Sundays. Just buckle up. Hallelujah. It don't work that way. You can't be a man or a woman of dishonor and have a life that people remember and value. If you want to be a man whose life is honored or a woman whose life is honored, you got to be a man who honors or a woman who honors. Most people who are dishonorable do it out of a place of insecurity. Jabez was a man who was known for the honor he demonstrated and the honor he received. And the Bible says, no, no, thank you, Lord. Let me rewind that. The word kabad, K-A-B-A-D in the Hebrew is actually the root word of the word we use for kabod, 
which is the Old Testament word for glory. When you have honor on your life, you actually walk in glory. I can't find no help in this church today. There is a glory that rests upon people who know how to demonstrate honor. When you walk in honor, God honors you with that. The word kabod is literally means weight. It literally means something you feel like, sit on your life like the weight of God's goodness. Oh, Jesus. When you walk in honor, you attract the weighty goodness of God. How many just want to be able to walk into a place and know that in spite of everything and everybody in the room that's looking at you like you are out of place, you just feel the goodness of God resting on your life? Can anybody testify that you felt the goodness of God resting on the weight of God's glory? How many have ever felt the weight of God's glory in the way that it, it's literally heavy? <laughs> why do them people fall in the floor when he prays? Or they pray. I tell you why they fall in the floor. They can't stand up. <laughs> why can't they stand up? Because the weight of the glory of God rests upon their life and the weighty goodness of the presence of Jesus sometimes lays us out on the floor. It's a wonder we don't explode. Get all bent out of shape over people falling out. I'm just thankful we're in one piece when it gets through with us. Hallelujah. Jabez was a man of honor. He honored and was honored. When you sow honor, you reap honor. When you properly value God and his presence and you properly value people, it just brings a rising quality to your life. You just rise. You just stand out. There are people in this room right now, you see the favor of God on their life in tangible ways. I assure you, they did not get that place to that place of favor by being a dishonorable person. Anyone you've ever seen that walks in dishonor has few friends. I'm gonna preach on honor all morning, I think, right now. You can't and I can't experience the fullness of the kingdom of God operating in a spirit of dishonor. This works in marriage. Ooh, watch everybody pack their bags. <laughs> you feel that? The chicken spirit got on people right then. It's like, my God, I'm hungry. Claydine, let's go. Don't leave, stay here for it. A spirit of honor works in marriage. I dare you, sir, to stop dishonoring your wife. Begin to honor and watch things turn. Ma'am, I dare you to quit calling out the fool in him. Start calling out the king in him and watch things turn. If you'll walk in honor in your marriage, God will bless your marriage. And I want to say so much, but I can't. Walk in honor. Demonstrate honor. Walk in honor with your mother and father. In fact, honor thy mother and father. And God said, if you'll honor them, I'll attach a blessing to it. What's the blessing? Honor your mother and your father and your days on this earth will be long. Now, I'm not the smartest knife in the drawer, but if you dishonor your mother and your father, you might be shortening your days. How many want to live a long life? Say amen. Amen. Then quit talking about your mama like a junkyard dog and cussing your daddy out when he don't give you what you want. And I rebuke every young person that gets on social media and dogs out your mother and father. They brought you into this world and they, they deserve for you to know how to open your mouth and esteem them highly. Who do you think you are? God, I feel like a parent right now. Walk in honor. If you'll honor people, your life will mean something. If you walk around all the time talking about preachers, why are we here, Jesus? Walk around all the time talking about churches, no wonder you can't find one. Your reputation precedes you. This is a situation in the kingdom of God. 
Because we ought to be people who honor to the highest extent. Celebrate. And yet we find ourselves someone, sometimes trapped in a mode of dishonor. Jabez is not known for his great gifts or his great strength or his great abilities. Jabez is known in heaven and on earth as a man of honor. He honored and was honored. But the Bible says something. Let me keep going. Thank you. Some of y'all are like, whoa, that thing, we survived. Hallelujah. <laughs> the Bible says something about Jabez. It says he was more honored and more honorable than all of his brothers. But look at this. But his mother called his name Jabez because she said, I bore him in pain. She named him according to her pain. Let me go over here for a minute. His identity was a product of her drama. It was her pain, but it became Jabez's problem. And when I was in prayer over this assignment today, Spirit of God said to me, I want you to tell some people in here who are wrestling with an identity that had nothing to do with them. Someone projected their problems and their pain on you and now you are trying to live a life recovering from a label somebody else put on your life. So I'm going to preach on it for a minute. Come here, Isaiah. Get up here. Please. Be, be a man of honor. Don't worry about your hair. Took three hours to fix, but we'll just... Okay. Got this nice shirt on. Zoom in on this, please. Right, which camera? Wave at me. Yep, okay, zoom in on that. It says, hello, my name is. So this is what life has done to some of you. Somebody's problem became your pain. Somebody's drama became your identity. Somebody else had some sorrow, so instead of running to Jesus and getting healed, they ran to you and projected their pain. God, I feel the Holy Ghost on me right now, on your life. So instead of you knowing who you are in God, you got your identity from somebody who lost, so they called you loser. Hello, my name is Victim. Hello. Remember my iPad. My name is Broke. Hello. My name is Should Have Been. Hello. I got a whole list of them. Hold on. Oh, yes, yes, yes. My name, they call me addict. Because someone who had influence in your life was addicted, and the only way they could find comfort in their addiction was to create you in a mindset of their own addiction. They wanted you to be an addict with them, so they called you an addict, and they said everybody in the house is an addict, and that's how they got to feeling good about themselves, is that we're now all a family of addicts. And then, hello, Jesus help me. My name is Orphan. Hello, my name is Unwanted. I'm gonna preach or talk or whatever I'm doing. Hello, my name 
is failure. Hello. My name is raped and molested. And I feel like damaged goods because someone else had a screwed up childhood and they took their pain out on me and did to me what someone else did to them because it was the only normal that they knew. So now I'm trapped in the pain. And we have people sitting on our Pentecostal chairs paying their tithes every now and then lifting their hands. And they got labels. You're stupid. That's a good one. (laughs) You're dumb. You will never be. And you are living with a label someone else put on you. I'm I'm fixing to tell you something that you need to know for the rest of your life. God didn't do it. God didn't call you a loser. God didn't call you a failure. God didn't call you a victim. God didn't call you an accident. God called you son and daughter. And so you come to church and I holler and I scream and I sweat and I spit and I say you're the head and not the tail. You're above, you're above and not beneath. You're blessed in the city and you're blessed in the field. And you go, wow, praise the Lord. And then you go home and you look in the mirror. And I have these labels all over my life. Not only did he have labels, not only did they call him Jabez, Not only was his name a result of someone else's pain, but he had lids on his life. You know what a lid is. A lid is that thing that hovers over us. Just stay right here, Isaiah. Don't leave. I'll ground you for a year. Just stay right there, okay? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. A lid, something that you put on top of a container that keeps the contents in and keeps other contents out. It's a cap. It's a ceiling hanging over your head that always seems to control your life. It's like you get into a place of launching out in faith and believing God for breakthrough and you really extend your faith and you stretch it out there and you feel that thing that's always pushed you back push again. It's like that unseen ceiling. And can I tell you that most of the time it's generational. Oh, I'm getting ready to preach right here. Most of the time it's generational. People who were raised in a context with a bunch of people who never identified the lid, they walked around saying things like, this family's never going to get a break. This family's never going to see a breakthrough. This family's never going to get a turnaround. My granny was broke. My mama was broke. I'll be broke. You'll be broke. Somebody has got to stop the drama and you've got to say, let me help you understand something, okay? Let's just get something straight, okay? You can curse your future if you want to, but pardon me while I believe for the good of God to be revealed in my life. I understand that your mama and them didn't get get in on this, but you've come too late to tell me that Jesus died so that I could feed off the crumbs that you have left over. I believe that God has got a table of abundance. I need some help in this church right now. God is getting ready to deal with a lid. Labels lids and limitations limitations 
Limitations are those boundaries that define what belongs to you. It's the boundary that defines what and who you can be. Limitations tell you where you can and cannot go. Limitations, it's like boundaries and property lines that square off and mark off things that are yours. Some people in this room, precious saints of God, hear me please. You're in this room today and there is there is a blessing that has your name on it that is on the other side of a place that you have stretched yourself to. God will not bring it to you while you stay bound. God will not bring it to you while you stay bound. He will not bring it to you while you got this little religious mindset. He will not, if he did, it would ruin your life. God refuses to bring you what belongs to you while you're sitting on the other side of the fence and wondering about the goodness of God. God is saying, if you want what I have for you, I refuse to bring it to you in the backyard of your limitation. I'm trying to get you to expand your tent pegs. I'm trying to get you to look beyond where you've been looking. Abraham, if you want to know what I'm getting ready to do in your life. You got to get out of this tent that you've been stuck in. Come on out here. Look up into the sky. Tell me what you see. I see stars that have no number. Good. That's a revelation of what I'm getting ready to do. Oh God, in your life, some of you have got to step outside your tent. Slap your neighbor, karate chop him and tell them neighbor, get out of your tent. Get out of your tent. Stay right there, Isaiah. Some of you have been living in a tent for 50 years. It's the tent your mom and daddy gave you. It's the tent that that religious system called a church you used to go to gave you. It's a tent of a system. People told you you couldn't and you never would. And you can't do that. And you can't preach that. And you can't say that. And you can't have that. And you can't demonstrate that. Sometimes you got to let them holler at each other. And you got to say, pardon me for a moment. I'm coming out of this tent. God is trying to show me something bigger. Who am I talking to in this room right now? There are some people who are satisfied to be locked up in a tent. There are people satisfied in this room looking at the same old ceiling. But there are some people that say, I can't stay in these limitations. I got to step out of this. So, he got labels, he's got lids, and he's got limitations. So what does he do? He does something cray cray. He calls on the God of Israel. Look at it, verse 10. Jabez, Jabez called, everybody say Jabez called. The word called in the Hebrew is the same word used in Jeremiah 33 verse three. Call unto me. And I will answer thee and show you great and mighty things that you did not know. You have to make a decision today, somebody. Are you going to live the rest of your life with labels and lids and limitations that keep you from coming into your purpose? Or are you going to get a praying spirit? <sighs> Stay right there, Isaiah. Ready to sit down, my God. I want to tell you today, until you get a praying spirit, you will stay labeled under a lid and limited. The only thing that is here today to change your future is a praying spirit. There are people in this room who have agreed with the labels, you've accepted the lids, you've entertained the limitations, but somebody today, I might have come to preach to only one person, but if I can preach to one person who is tired of the labels, who is tired of the lids, and who is tired of the limitations, and if I can preach into your spirit the ability to pray and to call on the name of the Lord, I don't care how labeled up you are, how limited you've been, and how big the lid they put on your life, if you will call on the name of the Lord, God is getting ready to shift your future and change your life. Slap somebody, tell them, give me a praying spirit. Give me a praying spirit. When your kids get crazy, get a praying spirit. When your marriage goes to hell in a handbasket, get a praying spirit. When you watch the news and get depressed, get a praying spirit. When you see drugs and all kinds of craziness going on in your neighborhood, get a praying spirit. When you want to become something greater than what your past told you, you can.
to be. Get a praying spirit. Somebody holler, call. Get a praying spirit. So he's labeled up. He's got all these labels on him. And how am I going to get this off? They called me. They called me Jabez because my mama had some pain when she had me. Now, you know, the first thing I want to say is, Chick, who do you think you are? <laughs> Devin done had like 26 kids. I mean four, but it felt like 26. We have four kids. Y'all ready for this? Not one of them was pleasant. <laughs> well, yeah, women in here looking at me crazy. I need some sisters to, to make some kind of amen or something. I ain't never seen somebody had a child and was like, praise the Lord, this is wonderful. I feel so good. When Devin had kids, she spoke in another tongue. And I'm not talking about a spiritual tongue. Devin went from Devin to Darth Vader. It's a true story. Like me, I came in to give her console and, you know, share with her. And, oh, baby. <laughs> I'm grabbing her hands. You feel this, girl? Girl, we got this. You ready for this? Oh, you're not feeling this. I see that look in your eye. You are over me right now. Get out of the room. Get out. <laughs> Nobody has ever had a child and been like, this is a wonderful experience. Every birth is painful. Amen. Yet, instead of accepting the pain and dealing with it, she projected it onto her son. So he lives his whole life with labels and lids and limitations until one day he calls on the God of Israel. And something crazy happens and I'm through. He gets a prayer life. And he starts calling on the name of God. That's my prayer, y'all. And when he starts calling on the name of God, don't miss this, his prayer life conceals his labels. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, some, some, there's some people in this room, you cannot outrun your label, but you can pray your label into oblivion. You do not have to be a recipient or a victim of what somebody else said about. I'm telling you right now, you can get so awesome in a place of prayer, you might worry that somebody don't know what God's doing in your life. H hear me, please. If you really get a praying spirit like I'm talking about today, not only can heaven not ignore you, earth will see the glory of the Lord on your life. The honor that God puts on your life will be undeniable. That's why some people sitting near you today have the jobs that they have. It's not because because they're the most educated in the in, in the whole business. It's not because they're the one they're the, the most uh, educated in the company. It's because that when they go home from their nine to five, their seven to eight is filled with glory, and their eight to nine is filled with prayer. And when they wake up in the morning, the favor the favor of God gets on their life. I'm trying to tell you right now, you may have a label on you, but if you'll call on the name of the Lord, God will wrap you in a mantle called favor and people that don't even like you won't know what to do with you slap somebody tell them give me a praying spirit so what did he pray Oh, if I had time, Lord have mercy. What did he pray? He started calling out on the name of the Lord. His prayer was, to, was strategic and it was targeted. He prayed four simple things. Lord, bless me indeed. Now I came today to confront all the religious knotheads that tell us we should never ask for the blessing of the Lord. Of course, we should ask for the blessing of the Lord as if someone else has a blessing to give us. He is the God of the blessing. Why wouldn't I ask him to bless my life? In fact, if you got a spirit of honor and you also have a prayer asking God to bless you, God will bless people who have a spirit of honor because if you keep a spirit of honor and God blesses you, he will also trust you to share that blessing. Well, God, we and I say, God bless me. It ain't just so I have something. It's so that you have something. When I ask God to bless this house, it's not just so this house.
something. It's so that the city of Chattanooga has something. Slap somebody, tell them I want the blessing of the Lord. Oh, I want the blessing of the Lord. I don't just want him to bless me kinda. I want him to bless me indeed. Ooh, from the top of my head to the sole of my feet. I want him to bless me when I come in and I want him to bless me when I go out. I want him to bless me in the city and I need him to bless me in the field. Somebody open up your mouth and say bless me indeed. Bless me till my children get blessed. Bless me till my wife gets blessed. Bless me till my dogs get blessed. Bless me till it's overtaken my life. Somebody holler, bless me indeed. I tell you right now, when you step into a blessing indeed, you start reaping where you didn't sow. Ooh. You're sitting in a room right now that is a product of the blessing of God. You better hear what I'm telling you. We wasn't smart enough to do this. We wasn't sharp enough to do this. We didn't deserve or earn this. In fact, when I walked into this about six years ago, I looked around and said, this is too big for me. And the Holy Ghost said back to me, this thing can't hold what I'm getting ready to do. Yeah! Somebody holler, bless me indeed. Bless me. He said, not only do I want you to bless me indeed, mm, but I want you to enlarge my territory. Yes, because sometimes these people will put limits on you and they'll say, you can have that and you can have that, but you can't have that. Who said we can't have that? Because God just told me he could give it to us. See, this is what I'm talking about, family. When you call out to God and say, enlarge my territory, God will start giving you stuff that other people said you couldn't have. I'm trying to break you out of a mindset of limitation today. I'm trying to get you to see beyond your backyard and your front yard. God don't just want you to have the back and the front yard. I believe the whole city block belongs to you. How? When we bought this church and, we, and we, we felt God in it and God made a way for us to purchase this church, uh, about a year and a half after we were in this church, the president of the school called me. You know, Tennessee Temple University. Everybody in Chattanooga went to Tennessee Temple University. People, people who ain't even saved went to Tennessee Temple University. Everybody I met goes to Tennessee Temple University. And all of a sudden, the school is going to belly up. And one day I get a phone call. And the president says, president says, they're going to sell the university. So you know what Devin did? Devin took Jim Phillips. Where are you, Jim Phillips? Jim Phillips and Campus Choir. And she got shofars. <sighs> well, I don't know about all this crazy stuff y'all do. Well, you sit there and be normal. <laughs> Devin got a shofar and she got campus choir and she walked out here around this school and she walked out here around it six times and on the seventh time she said y'all get them shofars out blow them shofars everybody start shouting 115 people on a 98 degree day y'all not hear what I'm saying she walked around screaming and hollering didn't, didn't say nothing for six times on the seventh time walked around lifted up the shofar everybody started shouting and three weeks later we had purchase that y'all don't hear what I'm telling you you don't hear what I'm telling you you don't hear what I'm telling you somebody say enlarge my territory I came to tell you the God you serve is bigger than what you got right now and if you can elevate your faith to believe for increase I declare increase is on the way if you believe it give God Hold on. Increase. Increase. See, and let me tell you something about increase. Uh, we done broke the one o'clock barrier. All my chicken people, we love you. We'll see you next Wednesday. Praise the Lord. We didn't start in this. We started in a little thing over on 4th Avenue. Some people walk in here and they say, oh, this is so nice. Well, we started in something that wouldn't fit on the stage. 
street with a bunch of people on Sunday afternoon over across the tracks in the worst red light district in Chattanooga and I'm telling you they tried to kill us you hear what I'm telling you they tried to kill us Chris will tell you the drug pusher across the street from the church down at the 4th Avenue campus one Sunday I was preaching and this man I'll call his name Bubba Bubba walked up and he gave his heart to Jesus and he looked at me and he said I'm a drug runner and I live across the street from the church and they told me that they own me and they told me that I belong to them and they told me I would do for the rest of my life whatever they told me to do and I looked at Bubba and I said they don't own you and you will not do what they tell you the rest of your life from this moment forward you belong to Jesus and on that Sunday everybody went woo Praise God, Bubba got saved. The problem for me is that Bubba went back across the street and he told the drug pusher, the preacher across the street told me, I don't belong to you no more. And you're not my boss, you're not the boss of me. You are not my daddy. And I'm not gonna be listening to you any longer. And the man, the drug pusher said, oh yeah? I'm gonna go over there and talk to this preacher. So he came over on Monday morning and he knocked on the door of the church and an elder from the church was over at the 4th Avenue campus and he walked to the door and he said, can I help you? And the man said, where's the preacher? And he said, well, he won't be back here till next Sunday. And the man said, pulled his shirt up, had a gun on his hip. He said, you tell the preacher, he's not going to be talking to my people like he talked to him on Sunday and I'll be back to take care of the preacher this coming Sunday. Oh my God. All week long, I was a nervous wreck. I prayed and fasted. I called all my spiritual fathers. Oh God, Jesus help us. Call the FBI. Call the police. Call Barney Five. Call somebody. I need help. I went back to the church the next Sunday. I drove up. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost on me right now. I drove up to the parking lot on Sunday and the house that the drug lord lived in was wadded up and shoved into a dumpster I said wait wait a minute where did the drug house go they come across the street they said pastor we can't believe this but this past week they got busted and they shoved the whole house into a dumpster and they put the drug push her in jail hold on somebody say enlarge my territory I feel an enlarging going on this morning I just heard the Holy Ghost say tell somebody by the time they get home this afternoon I'm getting ready to increase their territory Uh, I'm through I'm through and then he says put your hand up on my life to keep me from evil I don't know about nobody else it's one thing for God to bless you it's another thing for him to keep you from evil there are some people who get blessed but don't stay away from evil I can't find no help in the church. I don't want to just be blessed. I want to live holy. I, oh God. Come on, stand with me. I'm through preaching. That's why Jesus said, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Labels. Lids. Limitations. Put that back on. <laughs> just, just the prayer show. You went to go fix your hair. You were made to wear robes of righteousness. You were made to sport garments of praise. It is the enemy's plan to keep you limited with labels. But today, God wants to, the body to just accept indeed kind of blessings. Enlarge my territory. Somebody needs to ask him to do it right now. Come on. 
Open your, you can't do this in your mind. Open your mouth and just begin to say, bless me indeed. You feel guilty asking God to bless you. That's because religion told you he didn't want you blessed. But there's nobody God would rather bless than people with a spirit of honor. If you've got a spirit of honor on your life, throw your hands up right now and just begin to ask God to bless you indeed. Bless me indeed. I'm telling you, you could pray a prayer right now. Well, thank you, Lord. When it says he prayed and God gave him what he requested, don't miss this. It literally means his request became the door of access in which, through which he entered into the blessing of God. Did you catch it? His prayer became the door of access through which he entered to live in the blessing of God. Your prayer becomes your door through which you step into the blessing of God. I'm not here today to paint prayer as a mechanical transaction whereby you get what you want. I'm here to tell you prayer becomes the thing that changes your entire existence. My greatest weakness is when I don't pray. My greatest strength is when I do pray. My best friend in life, Pastor Wendell Johnson, he pastors a great church in Lancaster, Kentucky. Lancaster First Assembly. We were on staff together when we first started. I was the associate pastor. He was the youth pastor up in Athens, Tennessee. I was 21 years old. I had just got married We'd been married about a year. Jeremiah was about to be born. I was in a job I didn't know how to do in the middle of a revival. And I'll never forget, every day, Mark, I would go into my office. I would turn on worship music. And the first hour and a half of every morning, I'd cry out to God. And I'm not talking about, Lord, I'm here today. Help me, Lord. I'm talking about, God! I need you in my life. Oh, God. And I'd be crying out. And I never knew on the outside of that door was Wendell Johnson. He said to me, Kevin, people ask me all the time, what's the deal with Kevin Wallace? He said, I always tell them this. His secret is his willingness to cry out to God in prayer. I'm not talking about that because it's me. I'm telling you right now, when you don't think your prayer life is doing anything, when you feel like you're praying prayers and they hit the ceiling and bounce back down, keep on crying out to God. You may be labeled, you may have lids and may be in limitations, but if you will call on the name of the Lord, I am telling you, it will reverse the direction of your life. How many want to get a fresh prayer life right now? Lift your hands and just ask him, ask him right now, Lord, let a prayer mantle come on my life today. A calling out unto God. Some of you are getting ready for increase in territory, increase in authority, increase in financial ability. Some of you are getting ready to have jobs that are going to be influential. I am telling you there are people right now, nations are coming to your door. Nations are coming to your door. Nations are coming to your door. You won't have to get on a plane somebody will and I'm thankful for the missionaries but there are people in this room God is going to bring nations to your front door the door of your business and you're going to have influence over kings and priests and kings and queens I should say and over leaders in the earth God is going to increase your territory I need you to pray right now like I believe like you believe I'm talking to you I know this sounds too big. I know this sounds big and grandiose, but I'm telling you, we have thought too small. We have been, we have been limited by our labels and Jabez, Jabez changed his life by calling on God. 
Lord, every hand that was lifted for a prayer life, I pray this week that their quiet time won't be so quiet. Let them call. Let them call. Let them call. Let them call on the name of the Lord. This week, let them pray until heaven hears. Let them pray until a divine trundidicatamashaya. Denver Hustetler, God's been hearing you, sir. God's been hearing you. I declare you're changing the trajectory of your life. You're changing the trajectory of your life, church. Call on the name of the Lord. He is a God that answers. Call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things things that you do not know bless us indeed bless this house indeed every label every lid every limitation it comes off of our lives it comes off of our church we will not wonder we will not meander we we thank you God in advance for the increase of territory I need you to pray with me right now for this house I've been praying for you, but I want you to pray with me right now for this house. Enlarge. Come on, pray. Enlarge our territory. Enlarge our territory. Enlarge. Why? Because the kingdoms of this earth shall become the kingdoms of our God and his Christ. We want people to see the goodness of God, the glory of the Lord, the power of Jesus. Enlarge our territory. Don't get us locked in. Don't let us get limited. Don't let us live under a lid. Enlarge. Enlarge our territory. Come on, lift your voice with me for a minute. Enlarge. Enlarge. God, we hear you today. Pull up the tent pegs. Pull up the tent pegs. You said enlarge the place of your tent. Father, thank you for calling us to make room. Thank you for the increase of God. Oh God, we praise you today. Oh God, we praise you today. I dare you to pray in spite of the rush you feel to get out of this building. Somebody feels like your car is pulling you out of the parking lot, but I'm telling you somebody is going to touch God right now and your future is going to shift. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Open up your mouth and turn your prayer volume up. Bless me indeed. Bless my family indeed. Bless my children indeed. Come on. Ask the Lord to bless you today. Ask Him to bless your business. Oh, ask Him to bless your future. Ask Him to bless what your hands are on. Ask Him to bless everything you're up to right now. Oh, bless us indeed. Bless us indeed, Lord. Bless us indeed. say it I see God picking up the tent peg and stretching that tent out a little further for you and you pray again Lord enlarge my territory I can trust you when he picks it up again and he just takes it a little further and he sets it down why because the kingdom is increasing as you invite God into your life to increase increase I must decrease so that he might increase father I pray over our people today that they would experience the increase of God keep your hand on us so that we may stay f- away from evil though evil shall befall us neither shall any plague come nigh our dwelling oh God I pray right now Father for the blessing of God to be indeed. 
cover up every label swallow up every lid oh and every limitation and let us be draped and clothed in a garment of praise and intercession and prayer change the trajectory of our lives oh God as we find a place to cry out and call out to the God of Israel for you hear us when we pray I'm going to release everybody that needs to go. But anybody that can stay and needs to stay, I just want to open up the altar right now for people just to come and just lift their hands and begin to call out to God right now. I can't just shut this moment off. I can't do that. Somebody needs to shift. I hear that in my spirit so loudly. I'm shifting trajectories today. I'm shifting directions. Come on in here, young man. Come on, Shandara Messiah. Uh -huh. If you got to go, God bless you. Seriously, we love you. Get the babies. We understand what time it is. I'm going to let anybody to go that needs to go but everybody else that needs this moment come on into this altar come on Isaiah you can be done baby come on into this altar and lift your hands and lift your voice and begin to call on God today you're shifting the trajectory of your life shifting the trajectory of your life enlarge my territory God I need some businessmen that want God to bless what their business is up to come on down here and just call on him and ask him and business ladies come on down here and